Why treads as opposed to, why, why tank treads as opposed to wheels? Those okay. get stuck in sand, they get stuck in mud. Okay. You would need a four wheel drive system to get out. When we look at it, we like to think of it as samurai armor. It looks like a samurai hat on top it of the turret. It does look like a samurai. So, now, do you know comparatively the barrel length? Is that longer, shorter, other vehicles, does it matter? Usually in the tanks, everyone's using the 120. Welcome back, gameologists, to another amazing episode of Total Recoil, where we explore weapons, equipment, and vehicles from some of your favorite video games. I'm Israel Wright, your host, former Green Beret, and I'm very excited about our very special guest today, former tank commander, Shelby Bragg. Shelby, how How's you doing? How's it going, you guys? I'm Shelby Bragg, yep. Uh, so I was a former tank commander. Uh, I have drove tanks, I've shot tanks, and I commanded them before, so. Right. That's awesome. Well, I'm glad that you're here because today we are going to be looking at some vehicles from the video game Squad. Very popular video game. We've looked at LMTVs and, and technical vehicles from the game. Now we're going to be looking at things like the M1A2 Abrams, awesome. the Bradley Fighting Vehicle, all that kind of stuff. So I'm really excited to jump into it. So what do you say? You want to get going? Let's do it. All right. Man. Yeah, so that's an M1A2 Abrams. As you see, it's a main battle tank that we use in the Army. A little bit about it, it's a 120 millimeter gun. As you can see, the back right there, it's also a generator on top, too. Nice vehicle, ran by a, see a nice jet engine in the back. So that's a pretty cool feature really? about this. Like yeah. a jet? Oh, nice. Like yep. a high-end engine. Yeah. Rolls-Royce actually makes the engine. In no kidding. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, right there, you see the crow system on top. That's and the remote control Yes, there's gun? actually a remote control gun right there where a 50 cal sat in there. So it actually could be in auto mode, or you could actually toggle it yourself and shoot it. No kidding. Yep. Wow. Some nice technology. Oh, right here, look, someone's driving it. Cool. What's it like driving a tank, man? It's pretty cool. I mean, it's cramped in, inside the tank, but it's like driving a motorcycle with a T-bar handle. They're turning, you gotta use your shoulders. So uh -huh. your shoulder muscles get real strong in there. You've done all the positions in the tank, right? Now, you're uh, yes. a commander, but you, you've done all the different positions? Yes, I have, actually. The gunner right here scanning for targets, and what he's doing is using his reticles, and he's looking right there, see his, his range right there on the bottom. Finding his, his target, entering its center mass, and he's firing it to destroy that target. This is the main gun? Yes, this is actually the main gun fire. Are there commands? Is there a system of like calling out? Because you, I've seen you things in like Courage Under Fire with Denzel, okay. he's in the beginning. Right. And they're calling out commands. Is there right. like a procedure for firing and stuff? So yeah, usually what you do when you have your fighting position, what you would tell your crew is gunner sable tank. You identify what it is and then you say the gunner will identify that as a tank and then sable is the round you use. Or if you use a different round, you may use index, we call it heat round. Another type of round we use. So it'll be like gunner, heat, tank. So you'll fire at that tank, or you'll say gunner, PC, Sabo, and then you give the commands out, and that gives the gunner the AOK to fire. So it's basically your safety mechanism. Nice, that's cool. Command and control, I like that. Right there, he's spraying the 240 coaxial gun. You know, it looks like he's having fun with it. Scanning around, we call this scanning. When they're just looking around, looking for targets, it's just scanning. What's that splash? That splash of explosions and stuff? Is there like a, do you have like defensive systems on the tank and stuff like that in case somebody fires at you or anything like that? Or like, and what is it like? Like a flare, like a, anything like a flame? We have two smokestacks. So okay. the smokestacks are the screen. So we use that when we have to get out. We okay. uh, bound away from the firing targets okay. that are firing upon us. Or you might have a trophy system, depending on your system of tank, depending on the year and bearing of it, uh, that is a thing you can get as well. So I don't know if that looked like he was taking IDF, which is indirect fires or artillery, or he was just playing with a smoke cannon. It's just a physical smoke screen. So you can kind of maneuver so they can't get a bead on you. Correct. So okay. you just use that and it, in the optics, the enemy cannot see you because it's a big array of smoke. So the optics, the thermals can't see through. All right, cool. Nice. How do you like the readout here in squad? They try to do accuracy. Is that kind of looking like what the crow system would look like? That is spot on actually. <laughs> right here, you just had a loader right now. Okay. You literally just charged the 240 and he's getting ready to fire and he's firing right now at the iron sight. And you would get out there. Who would get up and, and get out and maybe have to expose himself and fire on that gun? So depending on the systems, back then the TC would have to get out as well. But now, as you can see, it's just the loader that gets out and he's protected by two ballistic windows. So the two ballistic windows are composite material. So inside right there, you have two ballistic coverings. Right. It's metal and then inside are two bulletproof glass okay. shields. And TC stands for? Tank Commander. So right here, this is, this is really actually pretty realistic. He cleared the gun, he looked at it, he loaded the rounds in, he slapped them down, and he went back to fire again. How important is communication as you guys are doing maneuvering and stuff? So communication is very key. Communication is number one thing you have to do inside of a tank crew. It's four people, so you have to be spot on. That way you don't get anyone harmed. Now they're finding an urban environment. Do you train for urban and like forest or desert? Do you train in different environments and stuff like that? Oh, of course, all the time. So depending on where your mission is gonna be, you'll get the training for it. And they'll either put you in either, you know, a desert, jungle, they'll put you in an urban. This all depends on what your mission is. So you get cross-trained on a lot of different 
aspects of it. Oh man, that's real accurate. It looks <laughs> just like when you sit inside of a, a tank commander station. Yeah, that's cool, man. Oh, good. Good way to, way to go, squad. You guys are getting that accuracy. You're blessed off by the tank commander. Wow. Bradley. Now Bradley we have a vehicle, right? Yeah. So this is an infantry fighting uh, vehicle. It's a carrier. They have a, actually a gun on top. Then they have a crow system. Instead of having it on top like the tank, they have theirs built in on the side of the gun. So you'll see two barrels on the side of the gun, actually. Okay. Then they have a designator right there on the back for when they shoot what they call a tow missile. So they shoot a tow missile or anti-rocket missile that's made to disable tanks. Okay. That's spot on. You got the tow hook in the back, the tow cable, the portholes. So if you have to fire from inside. Squad is what's called a mil sim, military simulator game. You know, there's games like Call of Duty where it's right. a little more action-based, Michael Bay style, right, fast right. paced. This one, troops move slower, the vehicles move like how hopefully in real life they do. And so, yeah, this is more of a Milson game. He's firing right there, it says AP. So he's firing an armor piercing target. Armor the, piercing, okay. Cool. The reticles look spot on. He, he has his, uh, underneath the numbers, they're actually the range. And then on the far right where the numbers are going lower, that's actually the rounds he's shooting out. Uh, and it tells him to reload it. And now right here, you just designate a tow. Uh, so the cool thing with the tow missile is you're actually supposed to lock on the target like he did and look how it has the wire the guided wire hits it you stay on the reticle and you can move it and he actually moved it and hit the target wow a physical wire just attached to that thing do you guys do like um coordinated training like not just you in a tank but maybe you and other vehicles around like coordinating your efforts so you get like kind of that communication between different vehicles and stuff all the time you have to have coordination with not just your vehicle but other vehicles around you so we have like a screen it'll be shown where you're at the other people in your platoon or the company, everyone's in different areas. Think of it as a big chessboard. Okay. So everyone has their different places, it has their grids. And what you do with that is you coordinate. So right there, he just popped it up. Oh, okay. So, that, so you, you would actually have something like that in right. the tank so you can see where everybody's at? Right. Oh, nice. And that's what you use to communicate. And then you just switch the, switch the radio channels up and then it tells you who's on what channel, who's on what vehicle. So right there is a, a prime example of what we use. You see he's in the green for his vehicle. And then you see other people such as the troops in the, like I would say the turquoise color. And you have the different layouts and the different grids. So that pretty much will show you, we call it an overlay. The overlay shows you where targets are at and people are at. And that's how you communicate that we have, you know, two Bradley's around the corner, three blocks down or something. Okay. So that's how you use that. Speaking of this broken glass thing, what's the armor like on, on an M1 Abrams? So on the M1 Abrams, yeah. it's uh, the armor is uh, angled armor. It's made to, for when rounds hit, deflects. You know? Oh, okay. You don't want a target to go straight through. You want it to deflect off. So the way that the Abrams is designed is designed for the slope. Okay. And then when rounds hit it, they you know deflect up or they deflect back. Not directly at the target, but away from the tank. So that way that the crew is safe. Okay, we had something similar. When we first got the MRAPs, the mine resistant armor protected, the bottom would be a concave right. bottom. You'd have a curve to it. So if, if an IED did explode, it would explode outward right. instead of taking all that energy. Right, so the V-shaped hole, same concept, yeah. but it's sloped on top of the tank this time. Okay. That way, you know, the crew safe. Did you ever do any kind of um, work with any other foreign militaries at any time in your career? So I've worked with the Canadian Army. I've worked with the British Army as well. I've worked with the German Army multiple times. There's been times where we, in Germany, we got to uh, try out getting their tanks or even in Korea, their version of their tanks. And you know, some of them have the same stuff we have, but in their language, okay. which is pretty cool. <laughs> of course, or yeah. some are even smaller than ours or they're, they're bigger or they use the same ammo as ours. So, uh. I mean, or we do training exercise with them. Well, okay. they'll fire their guns, we fire our guns. All so right, cool. it's a fun, it's a fun thing to do actually. That's cool. Great for building those good, strong relationships. Right, you know? all, all the time, that's a must. <laughs> cool. I see little similarities right. between the designs, you know. Right, so like you see on the back of theirs, they carry two fuel cans, you okay. know, we don't do that. And the reason why we don't do that is because for one, you know, if it, get, if it gets hit, it's gonna explode. For two, different tank designs, they may not have uh, extra fuel cells okay. or fuel pockets. Okay. So that's why they're carrying the fuel cans on the back. Where us on the hand, we have ours sealed in and we have it protected. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this, because I actually realized that I've never specifically asked somebody this and you would know, why treads? as opposed to, why, why tank treads as opposed to wheels? That's actually a good question. A lot of people ask that. Wheels okay. get stuck in sand, they get mud. stuck in mud. Okay. You would need a four wheel drive system to get out. But tracks, tracks can keep going. Tracks don't get stuck and you put a rubber pad on them. They pivot, they can go on sand, they can go on different um, different slopes. So negative and uh, equal gra grade slopes, tires can't do that. And you gotta think, these things, these vehicles weigh around 65 tons yeah. and, and upwards. So yeah. try to move 65 tons on tires, uh, that's a special tire. So right. also tracks have different properties. They keep the vehicle cool, they keep the suspension cooled off. Oh. So the tracks are there for multiple reasons. Also, 
the rubber on the track pads could be switched out. You could also use them as ice tracks. So the track pads, you could switch them out. They're very universal. Uh, Meaning okay. you could have rubber, or you could have ice tracks. So oh, it isn't, no you don't always just use rubber. So therefore, you know, you're back in the fight quicker. It's a pretty versatile way of getting around. Right, so a track, you just pop the track off, we call it, put a track section in, you're good to go. Wear a tire, you have to jack up the vehicle, jack up the shock, and then you have to change the tire out. All right. Which is faster, a track pad or a tire. Right. Track pads, two bolts. Oh, okay, cool. I love it, man. Right there he has his, uh, his designation for how far he's firing out. There's similarities in some right. between the two tanks. Obviously, British and American probably pretty closely. Right, it depends on the vehicle. I mean, some vehicles use our mechanics, some don't. Some actually have auto loader. We have a loader in our tanks where certain countries, they have an auto loader. Oh, okay. Auto loaders jam where the uh, human mind could, you know, you train it up, you could load it around in a tank in two to three seconds and ooh, fire. Wow. Where them, they have to wait seven to 12 seconds. Oh, okay. So. Now, you, I'm hearing the gears and stuff turning. What's it like being in a tank? What's the noise like? Is it loud in tanks? Is it quiet? So, believe it or not, the noise in a tank is actually, actually very, very quiet. Really? You just use a headset. It's a Bose headset. State oh, really? of the art. Yeah, it's Bose. Thank you. Uh, it blocks uh, all the noise out. So, it's noise cancellation, but you can hear perfectly fine. You got a thing inside of a cramped space, you're shooting a 120 millimeter gun that's loud. <laughs> so Bose, they're like, we have a solution. They found a solution for us. So it's actually quite quiet. You just hear the crosstalk between the crew members and then the radio chatter. That's about it. Love the real world communication. Right. So he's <laughs> telling where's the, where's the target at, you yeah. know? I mean, in a heated situation, it can't come down to that. Hopefully it's not. You got to be calm and keep your composure. You got to train for that too, right? Right. In a situation you're being fired at, you know, and stuff like Definitely. that. Definitely. You have to remain calm. You don't want to get uh, your teammates killed. I, I say teammate. Everyone's a team here. So. So I don't, you don't want to get someone killed. Right now what he's doing when he's firing the, the coaxial gun, he's using what we call lollipop. He's walking in a target to hit the person. So he's looking at the dust and he's moving the, the gun. Oh, out. he's kind of getting his targeting based on where it's hitting and walking right. it in. Right, okay. walking it in, yes. All right, cool. Exactly. Nice. Okay, FD-432 Bulldog. Right, so it's another Britain vehicle. It's just like our version of, uh, you know, the Bradley, but yep. it's their version. It's a troop carrier. Essentially, uh, it's made to get troops in and out. You're not meant to take on tank fire or anything like that. Right. You, you see, see how you had a camouflage as well. Yeah, and we're seeing the angle, the right. angled armor and stuff. Right. And then they also have that cage. Is that also for like RPGs and stuff like that to deflect them or to catch them? Correct. So yeah. what it does is it detonates the warhead before it hits the vehicle or the crew. And you see they have the cage right there on the back, right there by their fuel tanks or water tanks, whatever they want. Uh, put in them. So yeah, that's definitely a smart thing to do. They might have had those just, I was in Iraq in 2008, they might have just been adding those to cages. I definitely saw those in vehicles drivers. You definitely would see the RPG cages, and like you mentioned earlier, the V-shaped holes in the vehicles yeah. for the yeah. IEDs. So realistic as you look at that. He's scanning around, he's looking around what's around him. He's in his cupola, we call it. He's basically guarded, and then there he is firing the 50 cal. This is familiar to me because I was usually, when we went out, I was the junior guy on my team at the time in Iraq. So I would either be driving or I'd be on the turret. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Very familiar. But I love that 50 cal, man. 50 cal rocks. Yeah, man. Just shooting all day long. <laughs> <laughs> these big bullets, these big, like, half a foot long. Oh, yeah. The 50 cal, yeah. The realism you see right here. He the swept animation. out. He's putting ammo in. He hit it. He closed the feed tray cover, charged it. He's back ready to rock. Canadian vehicle. Oh, now do you know comparatively the barrel length, that 122, 20 millimeter gun, is that longer, shorter, other vehicles, does it matter? Usually in the tanks, everyone's using the 120. Okay. Um, some countries are using the 125. I think Britain does that. It depends on the gun, how they want to actually use it. Okay. Uh, it all has the same features. One thing about this tank though, it does not have a turbine engine, it has a diesel engine. The Canadian one? Yes, it's, okay. made, it's made to save weight. So oh. different tanks will have diesel motors, some will have a jet engine, like a motor like ours, or even some countries are talking about going green. They're making bio uh, bio engines in a sense, like uh, hybrid motor engines. Oh, so okay. some countries are thinking about going green and they're using hybrid motors. Camouflage. It's just whatever the mission is. You just dress it up differently. Right. Sometimes you put sticks, you know, just try to blend in. You don't want to get, you don't want to expose your position, we call it. Yeah. So you have to blend in and you have to cover your tracks. There it is again right there, which you mentioned earlier, the RPG cage. Yeah, RPG cage is all over the place. Yeah. Must have, must have. So rolling out, it's a good speed. I mean, 30 is pretty quick. What's At the gate, a... you want to kind of speed up, get to the your OP. What's the fastest you ever had a tank go? Fastest I've ever been in a tank is 55 miles per hour. Yeah. That's on the freeway, baby. That's, that's pretty quick. At full capacity, it's about 68 tons. So you got a, a crew, you're just zooming. You're you like think. Bowser in Mario Kart. Right. You know, it takes you a long time to get going, but once you do, Oh, you're, you're good. You're going. But once you're going too, the brake systems are, are phenomenal in those vehicles. Oh. You can ease in on them because it's just like a regular car. You just press the brake and ease. Or new drivers do this a lot. It's something that's not really fun when a new you get a new driver in a tank. Okay. They slam on the brake and everybody in the tank flies forward. Oh. And the driver's in there and all you hear is sorry. Like I 
<laughs> soft little sorry. And it's just like, you're just, he's mad. Are there lots of places where, uh, where in the United States, where do you go to train for tanks? So it, it depends on what, where you're based out of. Um, there's tanks in Fort Carson, Colorado. There's tanks in Fort Hood, Texas. And there's tanks in Fort Irwin, California. Okay. So depending where you're stationed at, there's many more bases. It just all depends where you get sent. It's good, the loader's scanning around. You may not want to scan too far to the back, but he wants to cover far. his sectors of fire. Right. It's good. Right. That's actually a thing as well. We call it grab the gun, because the gun will actually move up when you go over hills. So you oh, have to okay. grab the gun, and then you have to pull it down so you can stay on target. Oh, uh, okay. That way it's not jumping or, you know, safety reasons, we call it flagging someone. You don't, you don't want, want the gun to flag another tank. You have to hold the gun. Yeah, he's scanning. He's inducing lead right there. He has a reticle spot on, identifying the vehicle. Got the AOK and he fired. So that is pretty realistic. You can get a vehicle that, you know, the round doesn't hit all the way and you can hit a certain part or even hit the dirt. And therefore you'd have to do, re-engage and do another fire. Maybe rolling over some dudes, you know. You can do that. Yeah. yeah you can definitely do it that. It is a tank, you yeah. know. Do you remember the guy who stole the tank? Oh yeah. Drove it down the freeway of oh, Los yeah. Angeles. I don't know if you guys can find the footage of that, but mid nineties guy stole a tank from California Armory. He rolled through like a, an RV. Yep. Just like it was paper, man. He stole it from the National Guard Armory. Yep. yep. And he was rolling on the freeway. I remember that. How long does it take to spin up a tank? So like, you all get in there, you're ready to go. Okay, we got to power him up. So a tank takes up to maybe a minute or two minutes. It's pretty quick. Actually, you just turn on the master power, we call it. Flip the switches on. Looks something like the Millennium Falcon out of right. Star Wars, if any Star Wars fans. So yeah, you turn everything on, toggling your switches, and then there's a green button. It literally says, start. Press the green button, and the tank starts right up, and you hear the engines and the fuel. M1 Abrams tank has a jet engine, so it sounds like a jet turbine, like on a helicopter or, yeah, nice. just like that, like an airplane, and then boom. That's, that's awesome. awesome. It's about two minutes. That's cool. The lab, it resembles few vehicles. In the Marines, they have a variant of this, and then it resembles a striker as well. Is it, it maybe another troop carrier? It's another troop carrier. It's a diesel motor. So think about this right now. You can kind of see, you look right here on the side right here, you see the wheels. Now, this vehicle doesn't weigh as much as a tank. But back to that, if you have these wheels, you have to jack that whole vehicle up to change it. Mm -hmm. So a tank is way heavier, so we need more wheels. With these, they're not as heavy, so it, they have systems on them as well where they can keep rolling with one tire out. Oh, really? Yep. Oh, okay. So a fun fact about troop carriers. We're talking about like the little specific things like the armor, you know, and different variations in design. You start to see them once you look at these vehicles. See there's little variations in between countries, what they emphasize or what they can afford, right. you know, things like that. Some stuff is universal, like you mentioned, yeah. But right there you see armor piercing Sabo, 25 millimeter. It's made to fight other troop carriers. What is a Sabo round? So a Sabo round is a fin. All right, so stability fin. So it has a, a rod. It's a rod that shoots probably about almost a foot in length. That rod moves at a certain speed. And it's like kinetic force. So the kinetic force will impact the target and blow a hole straight through it. When it goes through, it's called what we call spa. So what it does, it shoots out the other end of the vehicle and it's supposed to suck everybody through it. Whoa. It's a kinetic round. Kinetic force is crazy how it works. You got uh, old vehicles that just put old vehicles out there when you're shooting out on the range, it's something to shoot at? Yeah, so sometimes you have old vehicles or pop-up targets that oh, okay. are like paper or cardboard, oh, okay. have the same effect. I We used to, we were out at the AT4 range, right? and there was all just old just old vehicles out there, just nice. something to shoot at target, you know? Nice. <laughs> so what it looks like here is that the crew, they're getting their test checks in, yeah. making sure everything works, okay. the guns are working, the smoke's working, and they're just getting their final, we call, you know, checks in, PCCs, PCIs, pre-combat inspection checks. Gotcha. So if something's not up to standard, you don't roll out, so you get that check fixed. Very important, yep. Ah, uh, the Russian vehicles. When we look at it, we like to think of it as samurai armor. It looks like a samurai hat on top of it the turret. It does look like a samurai. So, yeah. Right, so we use that in different variations of how we can tell what that tank is from far out. So you look at it, you can just tell it's a T-72. A little fun fact about this tank in the back right there, the Russians like to go real extra. So that right there, they use like a snorkel. They want to go underwater with their tank and ah. it seals up. So it's pretty crazy, their tank. Always got to have that action. Always trying to one up and ship. Right. If you look how it's sloped as well, well, they have a different way they slope their armor for incoming fire and the Yeah, it looks like there's almost low. like little segments as it right. goes around. So they have little reactive squares, reactive armor plates. So when a round hits, it's supposed to be interchangeable. So they oh. take that square off and put another square in. You don't in. have to replace the whole shield, you've got one section. Right, so they take the section off and drill another one in. So it's like bolt on. You hear that noise in the background, that's like the loader, loading that round up, getting it out of the rack, putting it in the gun, up in the gun, and then boom, firing it. So they use 125 millimeter. So everybody has their preference. Whatever their engineers decided to come up with, okay. they want to use 125 millimeter gun. Well, Rush, we must have longer barrels. That's what they need, that's what they need. <laughs> their tanks are armed to the TA. As you see, he just designated a, a guided missile. They wanted to be able to take everybody and everything out on the <laughs> battlefield. A so one-stop yeah. destruction shop. Pretty much. They have anti-tank rounds. They have guided missiles. They have coaxial guns. They have trophy systems. Jeez. They have everything. Not 
surprised they don't have a mortar on them. <laughs> For the glory of Mother Russia. There it is, doing their checks. Mm -hmm. Smoke, boom. We would do the same thing. When we were over in Iraq, we would you know, we would have to go by the range, fire off a little few test shots right. and stuff like that, just to make sure everything's good, and then we'd head out. If you're not zeroed in, you're not gonna be effective. Yeah. That machine gun is actually a, a real good gun. Shoots up to maybe 900 to 1,000 rounds a minute, something oh. crazy. Their weapons are real flimsy and old. So this is actually pretty cool right here. He's actually trying to hit down the helo. To do that, he has to induce lead, so. You mean aim ahead of the target right. where you think it's gonna be? So inducing, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what induced lead is. So you have to get the reticle, you have to find the speed, and the computer does that, but then you have to aim it on and guide it on in a sense. Okay. Any stories you've heard of tanks uh, doing these amazing things like an engaging like an air vehicle or something like that? Or Due to the fact that if you're engaging an air vehicle that close, you're most likely there's something wrong. Yeah. Um, you don't want to ever fight any vehicle, like right here, you don't want to fight an Abram close uh -huh. up. Reality, that would not happen. Yeah. But I mean, you know, Abrams are, they're good vehicles. With helos, they usually can shoot out seven to 10 miles. So a missile from a helo, you won't ever hear, hear it or see it until it's already destroying everything. What's the maximum range on the gun for the Abrams? So on the Abrams, the maximum range is usually around 4,000 meters. Okay. Maximum effective range. Okay. You can shoot out further, but after that two mile interval, 2.5 mile interval, you're you're starting to chance it. In okay, sense. The, the, <laughs> wide, the margin of error gets wider and wider. Right, okay. right. Because it, it has a computer on there that can Use everything for okay. you, so. All right, cool. It's another troop vehicle. See, okay. they have their um, tow missile on top. Yeah. They have their little scuba thing on the back, the little troop doors on the back. Yeah. It's a small vehicle. These vehicles are, you know, what you would see in Russia. These vehicles are very old too. Yeah. Been around for years. Oh, interesting. There it is, the tracked again, uh, no wheels. They also have different variants. Yeah. So they'll put like, like you said, it's interchangeable. Mm. So they'll do that a lot. Yeah, it's like with the M4, you know, all the way up to, you know, the Mark 18, the Sot Mod 1, the Sot Mod 2. Mm -hmm. it's a, the base is essentially the same. Right, right. But they put little bells and whistles different for different missions different purposes depending on how you shoot as well you know you may some people like ACOG some people like EOTech right and then you know if, if you're a sniper or a marksman you're gonna have a different scope or a suppressed or not suppressed so he's just laying lead down with a 30 millimeter I like that yeah so satisfying when you get that hit it's like trace around you'll see the green you'll see the red they're using green obviously yeah so you're seeing where the rounds are hitting it's pretty yep. cool you can get a little bit of ricochet it looks like that's pretty cool and they just designated a guided missile so that their guided missile you see right there has the same wire but everyone uses a different type Every missile is different, it could be a different variant, you know, okay. so. Okay, I imagine there's not a lot of cross-cultural sharing with that kind of technology between us and Russia. No, <laughs> no. The Russians want everything bigger, better, and yeah. the more boom, the better for them. One American scientist designs five Russian engineers cannot understand. One Russian scientist designs five Americans cannot live. Right. <laughs> I like the self-defense kind of stuff that they have on tanks and stuff, because your big lumbering, you know, vehicle and stuff, maybe a tempting target to a lot of people and stuff. So you got to have a little bit of self-defense. Right, right, definitely. I mean, the armor, you know, it's not going to always protect you. You can get hit, but you don't want to get hit. Right. So that's what I mean when it doesn't always protect you. And the armor itself, if you said it like, you know, usually they tend to favor the front, mm -hmm. armoring the front, and maybe there's not maybe different kinds of on the back or the right. side. So different countries and the way that they do the armor, it depends on what they're trying to protect. Ammunition, fuel, the crew, the engine. It just all depends. So if you have an engine that, you know, so if you have an engine that's weaker than the, uh, another opposing country, then you're going to want to put more armor in the rear. You're gonna wanna put more armor in the front. So when you, with the armor plating on the vehicles, it weighs the vehicles down. Mm -hmm. So some countries put armor on different parts of the vehicle. Okay. Maybe the front, the side. It's all a weight saving game as well. Right, so. you gotta play that, you gotta do that math. Right. Okay. Well, that was amazing, folks. We hope you enjoyed looking at the tanks and vehicles from Squad. Shelby, what was your impression of what we saw today? So these vehicles were spot on. Yeah. They reminded me just of when I work on them or drove them at work. They couldn't get any more realism with it. Good job to them. This is an amazing game. That's cool, man. Well, folks, if you like this video, go ahead and check out Gameology's Facebook and YouTube page for more episodes of Total Recoil. If you want to hang out with me and Cameron Fath a little bit more, go to Shift Fire on YouTube, or you can check out the Pop Culture Field Manual podcast wherever you listen to podcasts or on YouTube. If you want to hang out with me a little bit more, go ahead and check out twitch.tv slash myhappyself. And Shelby, where can people get a hold of you? If you want to get a hold of me, simply I'm on Instagram. My Instagram is mr.cali underscore 400. Right on. Thanks, folks. We'll see you on the next one. I am Israel Wright. Actually, we start there again. So, been on tanks, uh, shot, shot tanks, gun, ta uh, well, shot, I messed that up. <laughs> like I've shot, I've forwarded it, but uh, like the, the briefer tank version.